Hey, how you doing? So this video is about how to convert a Harbor Freight 1x30 belt grinder from its stock configuration to DC, variable speed, reversible, with some removable jigs to mount on the front to make it easy to sharpen your lathe tools. Done. Sharpened. Don't blew the tip. Don't blew the tip and it's sharp. And done. So there's a million ways to sharpen your lathe tools, including all of those name brand things. I've not tried them, but I think every single one of them will work. Of course, if you spent $500 or more on your sharpening system, I, I'd probably say it would work good too. So uh, I watched the bladesmiths on Forged and Fire and guys on YouTube, and they're using belt grinders for everything hogging off material all the way to pretty dainty sharpening. So I had a Harbor Freight 1x30 and thought that might work. It's rated at one third horsepower, a three amp AC motor. It says 3,260 feet per minute belt speed. Well, it's pretty easy to overheat tools when you're sharpening. And the belt only goes in one direction. And some tools, it might be better to have it go in the opposite direction. And so I wanted to make it variable speed. And the best way to do that is to go to a DC motor and, and then figure out how to go from there. So here's the exploded diagram from the Harbor Freight manual site. It has all the parts listed and all the parts listed that comes with it. Part number eight, the bearing is a 202FF. There are higher quality bearings available if you want to buy them off eBay or Amazon. It's convenient to at least know what parts we're talking about. Now, when I first got mine, and I've bought two, the belt tensioner pivot point, that arrow on the left, was tightened all the way. So it means that the tensioner didn't tension. It was just hard tightened. And changing the belt was difficult. So take two wrenches and loosen that nylock nut just a little tiny bit. It needs to be able to, you need to grab that leftmost pulley and move it, or on the right side, grab the adjuster point and move it against the spring. You can see the spring just there below the left side yellow arrow. You should be able to pull it against that spring and take the belt on and off really easily. So let's start on the conversion. So I said, I made two prototypes, uh, the left one, and that was my first try. And then the right one, I basically enclosed it a little better so that there were there was less stuff getting into the power supply. Uh, and that's the one that I use most of the time, is the one on the right. Essentially the same pathway forward, but the right one was, it, it's a lot cleaner looking. So I was trying to make number one as compact as possible. And uh, yeah, stuff gets all over. So now I want a little more access. You notice on the left one, the power supply was all straight straight in line with the base to be a square base uh, that got in the way for some tools so the second one i made a setback if i was going to do it again i might even set it back a little bit more than that you need to be able to have access around the belt in multiple directions it's just easier to get to it when you're sharpening the lathe tools so here's prototype two a couple of different views uh, you'll see me using it here in a little bit. It's one base plate and the, the screws you can see on the on the top left picture, it's just screwed down. It's not bolted. It's just <laughs> drywall screws through washers through the little rubber grommets that are the bottom of the feet on the belt grinder. And it works fine. It's only 280 watt motor, about just a little over a third of a horsepower. And you're not putting that much pressure to it. It makes it lighter and easier to move around. And I have a, a drawing towards the end with all those measurements, but they're right there written out. It wasn't complicated, let's put it that way. The complicated part was picking up the motor, was deciding which motor to use. And I was digging around looking for cheap-ish DC motors and 
stumbled into this 280 watt electric scooter motor. It's a Razor scooter motor, 0.375 of a horsepower. Uh, all of the documentation is online. It's really easy to find. It's about 40 bucks, uh, 32 to 40 some odd dollars off eBay. Uh, the hardest part is that it's got a chain sprocket and we'll talk about how I took care of that in a second. And then I needed a DC power supply. I uh, don't have those around, wanted something that I knew would work that was simple. The one on the top has a fan that's on all the time. So as long as it's plugged in, the fan's going and it bothers me. So the second, my second prototype, I used the one on the bottom where the fan turns itself on and off. If I get it so hot during use that it needs to turn on the fan, it'll do it all automatically. $32 on eBay again. That's the one I'm using now. It works fine. And then you need a speed controller. So this particular one, the NACRO DC speed controller, it's rated for 3000 watts, which is great since it's only 280 watts. It works fine. I haven't heard it yet. Uh, it's nice because it's got a remote knob and display and the forward reverse and off switch in the middle, 22 whole dollars. That's the one that I would use again. It's convenient to have the motor display. I find that I use that a lot. I was actually surprised. Drive wheel. So I've done it four different ways. Uh, number one, you don't even see. Here's number two. Number two is a three quarter inch oak wheel with the stock chain gear, 11 tooth chain gear set into a hole drilled in the back. It's recessed and then just screwed in with three drywall screws. Uh, it's all about getting the alignment of the thickness of the wood right. But, you know, I turned it on my lathe. That's, that's the whole point of this is to get to where I can use the lathe. So this was good. It works great. The stock plastic drive wheel is three and seven eighths inch or 98 millimeters. Notice up there on the top, it says righty, loosey, lefty, tidy. It's backwards. And that, that took not too long to figure out, but yeah, it's, it's backwards with your 12 millimeter socket. So my third version, I dug around some more. I did some more research and I used this rigid flange motor coupler. The center plastic is almost the same diameter as the coupler. I drilled into it with a bit. I attach it with four screws. It's nice because there are two set screws. So it makes alignment left to right simple. It was a little hard to true up the wheel. So one more try. So this is number four. So this is the best version of the four. It's a three quarter inch oak with a piece of plywood glued on the back to make it a full one inch wide, which is the same as the belts. And the through hole is just greater than eight millimeter. So the shaft slips in easy. The quarter inch plywood's drilled, made a tight fit, uses the set screws with the two millimeter hex driver so I can actually align it to the motor. Depending on how I have the motor attached, I can get it so it's aligned great. The stock plastic drive wheel is crowned to make the belt run true. I have not found any problem with leaving this drive pulley square because the idler pulley is crowned. It tracks the belt just fine. Again, this coupler, five bucks. You might need to polish the motor shaft a tiny little bit to get it to slide on there, but this is the one I'm using currently. So to get the motor spacing right, I had to space it up from the frame just a tiny little bit less than a quarter inch plywood. Oh, you know, you can make it as close as you want. I fussed about it's quarter inch plywood. I think I sanded off most of the top ply. Uh, it's a couple of measurements are important where that's located and notice the bottom of the motor is held in with M6 bolts. The front edge of the drive pulley on the motor and the front edge of the idler pulley on the top should be vertical. And that's because the way we're gonna mount the jigs on the front having that vertical or at least pretty close to vertical it's better that way so a little bit of alignment and that's all there was to it so the stock screws the bottom right picture you can see that's where the stock screws were on the stock original motor had to drill some holes in the bottom of the steel plate that is the base for the thing to mount the razor motor so there are some modifications you need to do to the main frame of the belt grinder to make this work better the Main body casting gets in the way of that tension tracking wheel at the back, annoyingly so, because if you have a belt that's a tiny little bit shorter, this needs to be in a slightly better location. 
So I took the thing all the way apart because I was scared I would cut that spring with my Dremel tool and I used a Dremel to cut away some of that part of the casting to make it where I could move the tension wheel forward and backwards. And then I also used my angle grinder to cut away the whole mounting lug for the table mount. This comes with a little adjustable table that I threw in the trash and I cut all of that away as you can see in the bottom right hand picture. And then I was having problems when I got this thing built where with the belt going forward versus reverse, I had to change the tracking a lot. So it looked like it was either a tweaked top pulley or a bent frame, and it ends up that the pulley axle was not in there properly. So I had to take it out, smooth the inside of the hole, fuss about get it where it aligned properly. Once the axle pushed all the way in, and tight that set screw in the red arrow was tight it holds the axle square as it's supposed to be and it tracks great now forward and backwards i only have to turn the adjuster screw a tiny little bit between forward and reverse and now the angle guides so these angle guides are as simple as i could make them they're pieces of wood cut off on my chop saw at the angles written on them I took uh, my Dremel and made a couple of slots, a little bit like a picture hanger, on the front of the casting in line with the center of the belt. And I have screws on the back side of those blocks. So I have blocks at 15, 30, 45, 60, 70 degrees. And I could make another block in just a second. It would be, you know, it takes no time at all to make a new one if I decided I wanted to do it differently. I have written on the block 60 degrees, for example, and on the tool, I write in Sharpie on the metal of the tool next to the handle 60 degrees so that I know which tool goes to which block and I can just change the block, turn on the, the grinder and sharpen my tool. The bottom left one, 45 degrees, that's a little bit bigger platform. I use that for the bottom side of my negative rake scraper and the middle on the bottom is for parting tools. You need to be a little tighter. It's 15 degrees to the belt, so I needed to leave room to clearance for the handle. And then the rightmost tool on the bottom is a very wide platform for skew chisels and the top of my negative rake scraper that you'll see in a later video. I can hold it against that platform with the skew angle skewed so that the belt is coming square to the sharpening point on the skew chisel and turn it on, go back and forth a little bit, flip it over to the other side, go back and forth, and it's sharp. Yes, I have to keep a few little blocks around in a box behind the grinder, but it's so simple. So my bowl gouge guide has to hold the gouge at a reproducible angle and pivot in three dimensions. I dug around and this idea is basically stolen from another YouTuber and just adapted to the way I build things. This is a permanent temporary solution. I built this piece three years ago and it's still working. I did add one little thing. I added a block on the base of the part that goes onto the grinder so that I could reproducibly set the distance that the tool is sticking out from the PVC. I have to visually align it in the twist sort of direction, if that makes sense. But other than that, it works great. Uh, you notice I have a black dot in the hole. I made different holes and met and actually ground on a gouge and measured what the, the angles were to get this proper. It seems to work great. I'm very satisfied with it. I may make a better one, but you know, it's working. So now I have detailed directions. 1 to 11 on disassembly and exactly the pieces what to do. If you wanted to clean it, disassemble, paint it, you could take it all the way out and paint it other than the large North American bear green color it is. And then the directions on how to go back the other way. So how to fabricate the base plate, all the wiring. It's pretty specific directions here. You can pause and read at your leisure. I am not an electrician. Be very, very careful. I'm not responsible for anything. This is just the way I did it. It's some directions on the way I performed it. Make sure you unplug the AC power before you do anything related to the wires. Don't plug it in un until you're sure it's right. And if you aren't sure about what you're doing, get somebody else to help you. 
as a maker thing goes, the hardest part is the AC power into the DC controller. And those directions come with the DC controller, so you can blame them if you screw it up. To me, this was straightforward, fairly easy. It's only three wires from the AC and two wires from the DC. I have a template for exactly where to drill the holes. You can figure it out, but the template has the whole spacing listed. The idea was that you'd be able to print this page, fold it, put it on the base plate, mark and drill the holes, and you'd be ready to go. If this is insufficient, leave a note in the comment and I'll change my description to include some more numbers. Now, there are a number of small adjustments that might make it go a little smoother. New pulley bearings, as I described at the beginning, maybe higher quality belts. I'm using belts that are about a buck a piece. It's not perfect. I have a little bit of wobble. You can use some sandpaper and maybe even a lathe tool with the motor running to true up the wheel. It, the way the motor controller works, if you just jam it down to off, it comes to an instantaneous stop. So I turn it down slowly to 0% and then turn it off. Otherwise, it shuts instantly and that's uncomfortable. The LED speed indicator, I'm very surprised. I run it typically 60 or 70%-ish. 100% feels very fast. I haven't measured it. I haven't measured the belt speed or know exactly what's going on with the with the speed of the belt, but 60-75% feels right. There's lots of ways on how to do convex grind on knives using the slack portion of the belt. I still use this for sharpening everything at home, scissors and my chef's knives. Because you can change the belt so easy, it's easy to go from 32 grit and hogging off 01 tool steel all the way up to a leather strop and some polishing compound and polishing my chef's knives. It's pretty great. There are some do nots. Don't stick your knuckles in it. Yeah, it's not the most dangerous tool, but trust me, 32 grit will take the skin off your knuckles nearly instantly. You'll be shocked how sharp you can get your tools, but it takes a little while to get good at it. Don't expect to be great at sharpening your tools instantly. Practice. The more you practice, the more you sharpen, the more you use the tools, the better it goes. And pretty soon the cycle becomes that you're, as you're turning, you'll go, oh, I need to sharpen, sharp. And sharpening will only take a few seconds and then you'll be ready to go again. So here's the parts listing. As of May 2021, this is about 150 bucks. That is cheaper than almost any other sharpening system available. It's, the CBN wheels cost almost that much each, and I can change the belt and jam along as fast as I want. It also makes me really happy that I built it. Every time I use it, I smile because I made this little thing. It does exactly what I want when you go to buy the, the belt grinder, make sure and look for coupons or certainly sale when, the, when it goes on sale at Harbor Freight because that will save you some significant money. Now sharpening, I have a bunch of tips and tricks written out. The most important tool is a felt marker. I use a Sharpie and I Sharpie color the edge of the tool before I touch it to the grinder once the Sharpie's gone, which it's like 130 millionths of an inch thick. It's gone very quickly. It does not take a lot of grinding to sharpen a tool. I've tried a bunch of different belts from 32 grit uh, all the way up to the leather strop. I typically use a 220 grit belt and a bit of a soft touch. The better I get at it, the less metal I have to remove to get it sharp. Also, the sooner you sharpen, the less metal you take off. So it ends up that if you sharpen frequently, you'll actually remove less steel than if you wait until it's really dull and then you have to grind quite a bit more away to get it sharp. I like negative rake scrapers, as you'll see in, in the live video here in a minute, and I sharpen those with the belt moving upward. I think it gives it a little bit better burr. I don't know for sure. It's another one of those logical things. I think it sounds logical that with the belt moving upward, it leaves a little bit better of a burr, and I'm sticking to that. Um, I didn't think that the leather strop in the compound would make my chef's knives as sharp as it does. It's unbelievable. There's a store near me called True Grit. It's where I had my 01 tool steel hardened and quenched, and they recommended that, and I would go to them again in a second. 
Now, sharpening might be a science, and there's people who dedicate half their life to it, but that doesn't mean it's hard or difficult or expensive. There's things that were sharpened using pedal steels and hand crank stones. You can get things as sharp as long as you learn how to do it. So take the time to practice to learn how to do it and have a little bit of fun. And now on to the live portion. So here's my sharpening system that you've seen in the slides. Here's the, that's the Harbor Freight, right? That's the Harbor Freight tool. Notice that the, the whole table's been cut away and I cut a slot down here um, as much because sparks come out of there and it collects stuff and it's easier to get it out if there's some space. DC power supply, forward, off, reverse switch, controller, display. It's just hidden back in there. I leave the, the side open because I can blow it out then. It'll remind me to blow it out more and this side doesn't get really all that much stuff in it, so it's fine. Okay, pretty simple to use. I grab the block, in this case, 70 degrees. I grab the tool, 70 degrees. Hey, I know I'm gonna do 70 degrees on this one. The block sits on there. Turn on the motor. We'll go 50 whole percent. Take the tool, set it on the block. Done. Sharpened. Right? It's not that much to it. If you want to be careful, you take a Sharpie. Take the Sharpie. Take the Sharpie and Sharpie the edge. There are the edges. Well, it's hard to see on there, isn't it? It makes it look shinier, doesn't it? There, now you can see. Take the edge, sharpie the edge. Sharpen. Straight to the tool. Sharpie marks all gone. Edge is nice and sharp. So we can do the same thing with a parting tool. There's the cheap Sorby parting tool. Paint the edge with some, some Sharpie. It's just handy. When you're learning, the Sharpie is just convenient. After a while, you get used to about how long or how much you need to sharpen and then sharpen away. If you don't have the motor spinning fast enough, slow speed, you can bog the motor down, right? If you're bogging the motor down, turn the speed up. It still took the Sharpie almost completely off in that one little second. Done. All the blacks removed. The tip is straight. Sure feels sharp to me. Simple. Okay, so I can do the top of the negative rake scraper. You'll get a video on this one of these days because uh, I made this whole tool. Um, there is some technique here. So I try to keep the edge with the belt coming as close to perpendicular to the edge as I can. So that does take a little bit of fussing on the top, especially because it's hard to move around. You're on a weird angle. And in this case, I was in front of the camera and that was uh, hard a little bit. But once you do the top edge, you don't need to do the top again until you've ground the bottom all the way back to the top. 
So that's a long time in this case. So I've got a nice new clean top edge here. I can just remove this one, go to the, the bottom side, which I do 45 on the bottom side. And then I set it up to go upwards. So the belt is now moving up because it makes sense to me that going upward will make the burr up. Do I know? No, I don't know. I didn't take a microscope. I didn't get, you know, fancy scanning electron micrographs of the thing, but it feels smart, right? This pulls it up and it lets you see sparks here, which is convenient to know that you're actually touching and that's all you need to do. You have to sharpen a scraper way more often than you have to sharpen a cutting tool because that burr does go away quickly. But let's see how that works. So 45. Done. So when I'm using it, I do that. Can't hear it, can you? <laughs> it's sharp, at least it feels sharp. The same thing, I've got the belt marks in line with the perpendicular to the edge, and that feels right. So I'll do that and go right back to cutting. I cut the bottom of the bowl, it starts to stop sending little tiny, beautiful cut pieces of wonderfulness off. Back to the tool. Turn it on, and back, and you're done quick. The negative rake scraper, once you've got the top down, the bottom goes pretty fast. There's space for my fingers behind the block in front of the metal. So I can hold it there and clamp it with my thumb and spin it around, and that's pretty straightforward. That one's easy. Okay, the weird one, is a bowl gouge. So the bowl gouge tool takes two pieces. One is this little block. From the PDF, I added this little block. So that's the stick out distance on, the, on mine. Still the same spot to put the bottom. So it hangs on the front of the tool the same exact way. I take the bowl gouge, put it in the tool, Set the distance that the stick out distance, right? I've already got that preset. Again, my terrible little tool that I'm I may make it again one of these days. Then I have to align the tool. So I'm trying to get the U bend or the parabolic bend to be straight in line with the leg. Right? Pretty close. It's a little hard to see on here, of course. And then it sits here. I'm going to turn this back to downward instead of upward. Notice there is a little tracking. Just have to change the track. Okay, it's about a turn and a half. And then I can just go right to it. So and done. And there's a million tutorials out there on the best way to do this so you don't get little humps on this side, uh, you can probably see that little hump. You see that little hump, there's a little hump on that side, and there's a little, a little divot on this side. That's all about timing and how long you spend in any one place. Not the tool, not the jig, the fixture. That's all about timing. If I spend more time at the tip, the tip wears away, I'll end up with a hump and it will go down to it like this side. So on this one, I need to spend a little more time back here where it's humped out. And on this side, I need to spend a little less time here where it's dished down. I would need to do a little more around the top. The single hardest thing about sharpening a bowl gouge is the timing of going around, not the jig, not the tool. Once you have the jig set and the, and the stick out distance is right and it's set up to go 3D in the right position you like, that part's simple. It's all about the timing. You need to practice the timing or 
if you're working on hogging out material with the bowl gouge early, it might not matter that it's perfect. You just need it to be sharp. Get it going, get it going. And then if you're really doing dainty work, really precision, then you need to work on getting the line straight. You can do that thing where you set the line flat and then cut to the uh, sharpen to the flat part. That's fine, however you wanna do it. But it's all about the timing. So here's, here's my sharpening system. It's cheap and easy and I made it. And that makes me happy, it works great. Hope you have fun and good luck.